Hey, it's Metagosis Perfect Status, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we have talked about sentinel lymph node biopsy, sputum cytology, nuclear bone scan, and even the Benz Jones proteins. Today, it's time for methemoglobin, baby. Let's get started. So this is your normal blood color. Normally, your blood should have hemoglobin. But what if my blood had methemoglobin in a significant amount? Now your blood's gonna be darker. We call this bluish, brownish, or chocolate-like. Okay, Metacosis, is methemoglobin a good thing or a bad thing? Well, there are no solutions in life. There are only incremental trade-offs. Another way of saying the same thing is that in life everything has pros and cons, even methemoglobin. If you remember my question that I left you with in my video on vitamin D, I've asked you, name three substances that determine your natural skin tone. And the answer is melanin, beta carotene and hemoglobin melanin is the most important if you have more melanin you're dark skinned less melanin you're light skinned this is physiological but pathological too much melanin hyperpigmentation too little melanin albinism how about beta carotene too much beta carotene hypercarotinemia now i am tempted to make a political joke but i'm not going to hemoglobin too little hemoglobin you have anemia and that's why people who have anemia are pale because hemoglobin contributes to your natural skin tone. If you have less of it, you'll be pale. Conversely, a wrong type of hemoglobin called methemoglobin and your blood becomes chocolate. But your skin is usually blue or gray. So we say blue color skin, chocolate colored blood. This is the story of methemoglobinemia. This is when I have too much methemoglobin in my emia, in my blood. So let's understand normal first. Normally you have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, heme, and globin. And heme is made of iron and protoporphyrin. And this iron is on the Fe2 plus state. We call this the ferrous. Fe2 can bind O2. Imagine a car with four seats. This car is your hemoglobin. The four seats are four seats made of iron, the ferrous, and they are ready to accept four oxygens. But what if I have a disease and now I do not have Fe2+, plus. in fact I have Fe3+, plus. now this kind of iron cannot bind oxygen. This is the story of methemoglobinemia. But what the flip does the word met mean? Met comes from meta, which means change. If you remember your chemistry, this was called ortho. Ortho means straight. Para means parallel to that ortho, and meta means change. If I go from the normal Fe2 plus to the abnormal Fe3 plus, this is an oxidation, because oxidation is one of three things. It could be gain of oxygen, loss of hydrogen, or loss of electrons. In this case, I've lost an electron, and electrons are negative. When I lose a negative, I become more positive. It's called common sense. And therefore, if I want to go back to normal, this is called reduction. I need an enzyme known as a reductase. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Now, on my hematology playlist on YouTube, I've talked about methemoglobin in about three videos, so we'll do this very quickly today. If you want more details, please refer to my previous videos. So what happens in methemoglobin? Oh, in methemoglobin, your Fe2 is now ferric, Fe3+, plus, and ferric is hysteric, but Fe2 is awesome because Fe2 binds O2. Okay, how can the red blood cell reverse this and mitigate the effect of the hysteric ferric? Oh, the RBCs have methemoglobin reductase. Oh, reduction. Yep, going back from Fe3+, plus, to Fe2+, plus. that's awesome. And now the red blood cell will be able to reduce the ferric into ferrous, or methemoglobin back to the normal, hemoglobin. Normally your red blood cell has some methemoglobin, like, like methemoglobin is normal? Yes, within limits, if it's less than 0.5%. Of what? Of your total hemoglobin. Okay, medicosis, I get it. But how can I convert the ferric into ferrous? You need lots of things. Cytochrome B5, cytochrome B5 reductase, this is the enzyme, and NADH, maybe some NADPH from the HMP shunt. What the flip is the HMP shunt? Remember glycolysis? Yeah, glycolysis was glucose, glucose 6-phosphate or whatever into pyruvate. Okay, now let's shunt it. And this is a hexose monophosphate. Why hexose? Because glucose is a hexose, six carbons. Let's shift that glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconate. And that's the shunt, and then you go back. You see how I shunted it? That's a hexose monophosphate shunt monophosphate, one phosphate. For me to go from here to here, NADP will be reduced into NADPH. 
And for this, I need a great enzyme known as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. This enzyme is awesome. It will convert glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconate. At the same moment, NADP is being converted into NADPH. Okay, but the NADPH will also might want to replenish it. If you want to replenish it, you need glutathione. Okay, you need to reduce the glutathione. Perfect. Glutathione reductase will reduce my glutathione at the same moment will replenish the NADP again. And why do you like that reduced glutathione so much? Because it can conquer free radicals, converts the harmful hydrogen peroxide into harmless water. And what caused the hydrogen peroxide to be here to begin with? Oxidative stressors, whether it's infection, drugs, toxins, etc. You have tons of these in your body. Every time they do this, you have mechanisms to conquer them. These same stinking oxidative stressors can lead to conversion of the ferrous into ferric. How do I go back? You need a reductase and you need NADH. Note, these stressors are the same ones that caused hemolysis in G6PD deficiency. These are the same stinking stressors that will cause methemoglobinemia. Okay, medicosis, uh, is hemoglobin good or bad? Well, it's good inside the red blood cell, but if it's outside the red blood cell, it's toxic. Oh, so I want to get rid of it. Sure, haptoglobin will absorb some of the hemoglobin that's floating in the blood, but what if haptoglobin is saturated? Hemoglobin will start becoming methemoglobin. It will jump onto albumin, and now this is called methemalbumin. You can test for methemalbumin using the Schumes test. Methemoglobin is now degraded to what? Heme and hemopexin. And now when everything is saturated, hemoglobin is going to end up in your, the urine. This is called hemoglobinuria. Some of that hemoglobin might be met or met hemoglobinuria. Hemoglobinuria can cause hemocidrinuria and it can lead to a darker urine, which is what happens in plasmodium falciparum malaria infection. But, 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 but what's the big deal with methemoglobinemia? Well, Fe3 cannot bind O2. If you cannot bind O2, you are hypoxic. Hypoxia will trigger an increase in EPO. This is called secondary erythrocytosis. Moreover, when you cannot carry oxygen, this will decrease oxygen saturation and all of your tissues will suffer. Please remember, only Fe2 can carry O2, but Fe3 cannot. One of the causes of polycythemia or erythrocytosis or increased red blood cell count is increased EPO, this could be secondary to hypoxia, which is exactly what happened in methemoglobinemia. What does hypoxia mean? Well, oxia means oxygen, hypo means low, low oxygen. What are the causes? Ischemia, less blood going to the organ. Hypoxemia, well, there is blood, but the blood is not carrying oxygen. Or there is blood, the blood is carrying oxygen, but the blood sucks. It has a hemoglobin abnormalities. Hemoglobin anomalies include carbon monoxide poisoning and methemoglobinemia. If you have ever seen a hypoxic patient, you'll usually find cyanosis, central cyanosis I might add, confusion, cognitive impairment, lethargy and fatigue. Or as we say in Egypt, fatigo. Here is your normal hemoglobin. Most of it is oxyhemoglobin, oxygen on the hemoglobin. Beautiful. And some of it is just deoxy, which is carbon dioxide or others. But here in methemoglobinemia, look at this. Oxyhemoglobin has decreased. Horrible. Methemoglobin has increased. Also horrible. How do we measure the oxygen saturation? The oxygen saturation is the percentage of the oxyhemoglobin to the total hemoglobin. In this case, 97% of your total hemoglobin was made of oxyhemoglobin. But here, your oxyhemoglobin has dropped and therefore your oxygen saturation has decreased to 50%. That's awful. And here's a comparison between pulse oximetry and pulse cooximetry. I will leave you to read it. Methemoglobinemia will lead to shifting of your oxygen dissociation curve to the left. And with left shift, the tissue is left behind, left without oxygen. Methemoglobinemia and the double whammy. Not only methemoglobin does not bind oxygen well, but it also prevents the oxygen that was already on the hemoglobin from being released to the tissue. And that's why it's a left shift. With left shift, the tissue is left behind. Now the tissue is between a rock and a hard place. Causes of methemoglobinemia. We have acquired methemoglobinemia and congenital methemoglobinemia. Let's say I'm a doctor at the hospital and a patient came in with methemoglobinemia. I'll just ask one question. Is this acquired methemoglobinemia or congenital methemoglobinemia? If it's acquired, I will dance because it's treatable. If it's congenital, I will cry weep, sob, and sprinkle some dust particles on my forehead. 
This is terrible. Acquired, you were normal, but you acquired it due to exposure to a certain chemical or drug. We will give you some vitamin C, some methylene blue, and we'll try to identify the offending agent, remove it, and you everything will be hunky-dory. But congenital, that's a genetic disease. You have deficiency of the doozy enzyme, the reductase, and that's why it's a hemoglobin M disease. And this is ugly. And here is a case. 31-year-old comes to your office in December complaining of sore throat, headache, aches, and fever. He lives with his mother who has a cold. You diagnose him with viral pharyngitis, sprayed some lidocaine for the throat pain, give him Tylenol, and sent him home. Three days later, he came back with his lawyer because his skin is dusky, his tongue and lips are blue, and he threatens to sue. He has headache and he's so tired because of you. Blood you drew, its color was dark, his SAO2 is low, his PAO2 is off the chart. What's the most likely diagnosis? Think about it. Now, this is not an actual mathematical equation. It is something that I just pulled off of my intergluteal cleft. Okay, oxygen content depends on three things. Hemoglobin concentration, which is how much hemoglobin you have. P, small AO2, which has how much oxygen you have floating in the blood, not on the hemoglobin floating in the blood. And SAO2, which is the oxygen saturation, which is how much oxygen is sitting on the car seats and the hemoglobin. So what happens in methemoglobinemia? Your SA2 is toast. We have two types of cyanosis. In methemoglobinemia, you will see the central cyanosis. If you want to make your professor super happy, just tell them that there is no clubbing in methemoglobinemia. In order to diagnose, one must observe and reason. Clinical pictures, signs and symptoms, skin discoloration. In methemoglobinemia, your skin is pale, gray, blue, or dusky. Cyanosis, blue lips, blue tongue, blue everything. Without oxygen, you get headache, lightheadedness, weakness, palpitations, chest pain, confusion, altered mental status, delirium, seizure, acidosis, arrhythmia, pallor, fatigue, cardiac ischemia because of the anemia. Finally, death. The greater the methemoglobin, the worse the symptoms. How do you diagnose it? Rule out hemolysis, screen for G6PD deficiency, do hemoglobin electrophoresis, enzyme assay for this beautiful reductase, look at the blood color, potassium cyanide test, filtered paper test. Can I differentiate between deoxyhemoglobin and methemoglobin? Yes, using a filter paper. How do I manage methemoglobinemia? Remove the offending oxidizing agent, give vitamin C, methylene blue. If the patient is blue, give them methylene blue. But, but why do you give vitamin C to methemoglobinemia? Because vitamin C will help you convert the ferric into ferrous and Fe2 can bind O2. These are some pearls for the pros. And this is methemoglobinemia in a nutshell. Which of the following set of lab findings do you expect to find? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? Let me know the answer in the comment section. In life, everything has pros and cons. But hey, medicosis, everything that you said about methemoglobin was, was terrible. Does it have any pros? Yes, it can prevent or treat cyanide poisoning. Please watch my video on cyanide poisoning. There are many doctors in the hospital. Most of them are doofuses. But which ones will witness methemoglobinemia the most? Geriatric doctors, pulmonologists, and pediatricians. Geriatric and pulmonologists will encounter acquired methemoglobinemia. Pediatricians will encounter the horrible genetic hemoglobin M disease. And now, today's topic, blood emit hemoglobin level. Uh, physiologically, you should have a 0 0.062, 0 0.24 grams per deciliter. This is the one with the international units. And normally, your hemoglobin should not exceed 1.5% of total hemoglobin at most. Pathologically is when you have more than 40% of your total hemoglobin made of methemoglobin. And when you do percentages like this, we call this hemoglobin electrophoresis. But when should I order the methemoglobin test if the patient is hypoxemic? What are the interfering factors? Tobacco, carbon monoxide, and any drug that can raise the methemoglobin, such as benzocaine. If you like this video, you will love my antibiotics course. It's absolutely beautiful. Go to medicosisperfectionatus.com. You can download it today and keep it for you forever. It has 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, my ultimate notebook, and a mind map. You can also download my CNS pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Here, go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.